So now the clinical features of the stroke. Before starting with the signs symptoms, I should tell something else about stroke. There is a campaign all over the world to help detecting the stroke patient and to raise their responsiveness. That campaign is known as Act First campaign. As because if you get a stroke patient, you have to act fast. That's why it is called Act First campaign. So stroke is an act first case as because with the stroke time lost is brain lost. So now the symptoms in act first campaign they tell about three symptoms by the mnemonic first but I tell it as first case to include the symptoms. So for symptoms first case. So the symptoms are first case. This is the mnemonic for remembering the symptoms of stroke. So F for facial deviation, A for arm weakness as in hemiparesis or hemiplasia, S for speech difficulty and T is actually not a symptom. T is like T for time, time to call the ambulance and C for coma, A for ataxia, S for seizure and E for eye or visual deficit. Now, what are the signs of the stroke? So, in case of signs of the stroke, on general examination, we will get blood pressure is usually high. Why the blood pressure is high? As because in CNS ischemia, it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and this sympathetic nervous system stimulus will raise the blood pressure and we will get features of diabetes mellitus or dyslipidemia. In nervous system examination at first we need to see the level of consciousness by Glasgow coma scale and the jerks. In stroke we get exaggerated jerks in contralateral side and plantar response is extension in contralateral side because stroke is an upper motor neuron lesion. Now why do we get exaggerated jerks in contralateral side? Now I am explaining it on the board. So I told that stroke is an upper motor neuron lesion as because we know that from anterior horn cells of the spinal cord to up to the cortex it is upper motor neuron. If stroke is here 
then obviously it is upper motor neuron lesion and from anterior horncils of the spinal cord to the effector organ it is called lower motor neuron so stroke is upper motor neuron lesion now why there is exaggerated jerks in contralateral side in case of stroke cerebral hemisphere here is basal ganglia internal capsule thalamus now these are the corticobulbar tracts and it may be called as pyramidal tract also and this pyramidal tract decusses at the level of lower medulla at the level of lower medulla this pyramidal tract decusses okay so pyramidal tracts are actually these are aggregation of the upper motor neuron nerve fibers that are involved with the motor function of the body so if stroke is in this side if stroke is in this side of cerebral hemisphere if these corticobulbar tracts are damaged then this corticobulbar tract or pyramidal tract will decussate in this lower medulla it will decussate it will cross so this pyramidal tract will decussate and we will we are getting that exaggerated jerks in this side so if it is in the left side then we are getting the exaggerated jerks in the right side so this is the easy or simplified explanation of the side determination now the investigations there are several investigations for the stroke but the most important investigation is CT scan. What are the CT scan findings of the ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke? I am showing it on the board. So here is the CT scan findings of the hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. In hemorrhagic stroke, there is an intracerebral hemorrhage with surrounding edema. This is white and white is it is called hyperdense in case of CT scan. And in ischemic stroke, there is an infracted area in the right sided parietal lobe. And it is black or hyperdense in CT scan. Now why in hemorrhagic stroke there is hyperdense or white? In hemorrhagic stroke, acute hemorrhage can absorb the x-rays and that's why it appears as hyperdense or white in CT scan. But in, what happens in ischemic stroke is there is reduced blood supply or no blood supply at all. That's why there is an infracted tissue. This infracted tissue cannot absorb the x-rays. That's why here, here is hyperdense area or black area in the CT scan. And these things can be remembered in this way that bone has calcium that same in blood also bone and blood this appears as white in CT scan and fluid or water this appears as black so this is skull this is bone this bone and this blood this hemorrhage it appears as white white means hyper dense in CT scan and here is infracted area infracted tissue so infracted tissue fluid or water this appears as black or hyper dense in CT scan now what are the treatment of this stroke so in case of treatment of the stroke either it is hemorrhagic stroke or ischemic stroke we have to give a general treatment we have to give a common treatment that common treatment includes maintenance of the airway breathing circulation and maintenance of an input output chart and there are care of the bowel care of the bladder care of the skin care of the oral cavity and care of the eyes and also feeding and control of the infections these are the treatment we should give to a stroke patient 
irrespective of its type. Now the specific treatment for ischemic stroke is aspirin and the specific treatment for hemorrhagic stroke is suction of the hematoma by bar hole operation in case of intracerebral hemorrhage and nemodipine that is a calcium channel blocker in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage. So these are the basic informations of the stroke. In my next video I may continue with the stroke syndrome and lesion localization. Thank you.